Hello everyone, I'm in the nice time. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Hi gang, it's Mike, and it's Monday, so it must be Mike on Monday. Unless, of course, you're watching this on another day of the week. In that case, just pretend it'll be fine. Uh, wow, well, what an interesting week we've had this week. So, uh, let's have a look at what happened at West Ham this week. On Tuesday, we beat uh, Bolton Wanderers 3-0 at home. They were a very poor Bolton Wanderers, but hey, you can only beat the team that are in front of you. And at times, we played quite well, especially in the first half, and it was great to see some of the youngsters get a run out. Um, Nathan Holland et al. Uh, I thought we did pretty well, uh, but there you go. Uh, and we all waited for uh, Wednesday to find out who we were going to play in the next round, and we all hoped for something, someone easy, preferably a home tie against Bristol City or something like that, and found out we've got Spurs away. Uh, um, it's a bit of a nightmare. Uh, it's a bit like uh, a bit like losing a winning lottery ticket uh, in one hand, but on the other hand, discovering that Emma Watson's moved in next door and has a laissez-faire attitude to drawing the curtains. Uh, in as much as it's a hard game, but it spurs. Let's have it. Uh, on Thursday, uh, Slavin Bilic gave his pre-match press conference about the game and, and droned on endlessly about the great atmosphere at Spurs games and how he was looking for the team to be positive and do that. Uh, on Friday, we all went to bed early because we had to be up the crack of dawn for the ridiculous early kickoff on Saturday. And Saturday came round and we lost 3-2 at home to Spurs. So, um, so let's talk about the game briefly. It's been covered elsewhere. Um, it sounds exciting for you too, um, but uh, I took my lad Ivo, he's five, I took him to his first ever game and it was that one, and it sounds exciting, but it wasn't really, was it? Because we did our usual thing and said, hey guys, uh, have a three goal head start, why don't you? And then we'll try and play catch up. And it, it, it seems really odd that, that we decided to do that. I mean, we, we do it all the time, I must admit that, but yeah, so it wasn't really that close. Um, it was exciting us trying to get back at them, but you know, uh, the thing that annoyed me the most as well is uh, it's Southern Village's press conference. Now, in the world of entertainment, there's a famous saying, when something goes wrong, you go, that show business. And that's one of those weird phrases which you don't find anywhere else. You don't find somebody in an operating, operating theatre and they're going, Doctor, uh, Doctor, the patient's dying. <sighs> that's brain surgery. It just doesn't really work like that. But Southern Village seems to have found the football equivalent as he droned on about, uh, in the post match thing, about the quality of Spurs rather than our ineptitude at, at defending. And uh, in, in a weird way that he was sort of going, that is football management and all that and uh, it, it just seems a little bit incongruous to me a little bit incongruous anyway um it's worth looking at our defense though i do think there is some very very shocking statistics going on here so last season we conceded 63 67 goals uh to put that in some sort of context middlesbrough got relegated having conceded conceded 53 and even Sunderland only conceded two more than us. And they were really shockingly bad. I mean, that's a lot of goals to concede. Uh, and you would expect, maybe in the summer transfer window, for us to do something about it. But, you know, maybe Carvalho would have been the answer. Who knows? We'll never find out, will we? Um, and you wonder why it's like that. Because this season, of course, we've conceded the joint... We've got the joint worst uh, conceded uh, uh, 13 goals. Uh, the only other team that's conceded as many as us a Palace, a team that haven't got a point or managed to score a goal. Uh, so, I mean, that's again, what are we doing? You are not going to succeed or even be mid table or even be respectable conceding that many goals. And it seems odd because Billich, we all remember him from his time at West Ham as a really good, strong defender. We think of him as being no nonsense. We think he's, he was in the World Cup semi final, for goodness sake. And it's hard. To not think of him as anything other than a great, um, a great friend. But um, I'm thankful to the lovely man on the boat on Saturday who told me this, and I didn't believe him. So I checked the stat online and looked at the Premier League statistics. And would you believe, right, that in total, I'm mean, uh, checking my notes here, Slaven Bilic for West Ham and Everton um, played a ton total of 76 Premier League games. How many out of both over both teams, all those 76 games, how many clean sheets do you think Slaven Bilic kept? None. Not one. Isn't that odd? Because we think of him as a good player. Not one clean sheet over those two sides in all those Premier League games. 
I, I'm amazed by that because um, you'd think with a roar of averages you'd come across a team that just couldn't hit a barn door with a banjo over 76 games. But no, uh, not one clean sheet. Wow, that is really odd. But we need to face facts. I'm sure Slaven Bilic has faced up to it. He's going to go. I mean, he is, he is the dead man walking phrase. That's a zombie, technically. I wouldn't call him that. Um, look, I love Bilic. He's a lovely, lovely guy. But... He just gets it wrong time and time again, doesn't he? I mean, replacing Antonio with Andy Carroll was sheer lunacy. I mean, look, Andy Carroll's got his part. I'm not a fan of Andy Carroll, but I understand he's got his place in the team. Um, but on Saturday, uh, Bilic lined up very much in a 3-4-3 four, a three, four, three formation. And uh, the idea, and it was a very good idea, tactically got it right to start with, was to they would let them push right up because we know they're going to they're going to close down and we know they're going to push that back line right up to the uh, uh, to the halfway line. Play three quick players up front, dink the ball over the top into the space behind the defence. Right, fine. But when Antonio is replaced by Andy Carroll, that's gone out of the window totally. Really, and it doesn't matter whether Hernandez is off the striker or wide on the right. I mean, really, what is he doing anyway? Putting Andy Carroll on into that system is just the end of it. Uh, so if you're going to bring Andy Carroll on, even though he had Ayu and Sacco on the bench, but never mind, uh, I hope either of them could have played in that same system. If you bring Andy Carroll on into that system, you, you then have to change that formation. Uh, later on, when we were chasing a, an equaliser, we switched to 4-4-2 and scored a goal in the 4-4-2 shape. And you know what? That's the shape that suits Carroll. That's how you get the best out of him, not playing that way, that same 3-4-3 shape. I mean, that's what you're going to have to do. And we also discovered, didn't we, really, that we're as good as Spurs, as long as they've got a player less than us. But, you know, uh, so he's going to go. He, he must know that. It's just a question of when. We've got an international break coming up. And we always seem to be on that. If he loses his next game, then you got sack him because we lost at home to Spurs. But if we lose against Swans, he's going to go. I mean, it's just getting more and more arbitrary, isn't it? It was like, well, if we don't win against this team, if we don't win against that team, I mean, you, you can't be down to one game, surely. It's just sounding more and more ridiculous. Like, if he turns left when he leaves the, the team car park, we'll have to sack him. Or if he has brie in his sandwich this lunchtime, he's gone. It just seems really arbitrary now. Um, we haven't got any real shape. And that's the weird thing about watching that game on Saturday. Uh, it was a great atmosphere. It was brilliant. The stadium was rocking. Uh, but Spurs taught us more than, uh, than just uh, that they were going to beat us. They taught us a lot. You watch how Spurs set up. Spurs have got some very good players, okay? But they've got a really good shape and a really good system. They all know where each other are. They know what their identity and philosophy is behind it. And they know exactly what they're doing. And also, in their sort of shape, Deli Alley is really close to Kane. Now, when we play with a striker and players behind him, and that striker ends up totally isolated. But Deli Alley was almost in his shorts, for goodness sake. He was that close to him. And uh, it, it works really well for them. And uh, you could say, well, they've got good better players than us, but we've got some really good players. There is nothing on the, in that team sheet that was weak. You know, they're all good players, okay? Kyuto is very good at running up and down, often does it without the ball or to any great effect. But, you know, oh, do you know what? Let's look on the bright side. Um, there are some real positives, some things we do better than Spurs. Uh, I'll give you an example of a couple, right? One, we have a way better shirt than they do. I mean, that awful sort of white thing and the collar doesn't even go all the way around. It just looks hideous, it's boring. And anyone who isn't an elite athlete looks like a fucking Teletubby in it, right? So that, just don't look at our shirt. Even with the, okay, it's controversial, the sort of V, darker V here. Uh, it's a really nice looking shirt, I think, you know, and infinitely better than their one says that. And two, our team are way harder to spell than their team. I mean, Deli Alley, get out of here, Deli Alley. Anyone can spell that. Harry Kane, pff, come on. Ericsson. You know, oh, come on, give us a break. They're way too... You want to try them in their team with Zabaleta, Arnautovic, uh, Hernandez. You have your Hernandez, Sanz Crossdrop, Ad Chikorito, and your knackered there, aren't you? Only Joe Hart lets us down on the spelling from... I can't even say Chikukiate properly. That alone spell it. Um, but yeah, we are way, way harder to spell. So there you go. And let's sort out, hope that we can sort out our defence. Because at the end of the day, weirdly, the players are actually good. If you look at them individually, Winston Reid's a very, very good defender. Even Font is now showing some form and looking like a good defender. 
We've got two decent left backs, and I think Zabaleta has started to really look like class as a right back. But, you know, why as a unit are they not playing? Well, it's the same thing. They're not being told how to play, they're just sort of shoved out, and you're playing there, off you go. That isn't enough. That is not organising a team. And I'm sorry, Slavin, if you're watching this, hi mate, uh, but if you are, and you're thinking that hey, isn't what happens, that's what it looks like happened, and that's what the results indicate happened. So there you go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's mic on Monday. I'll be back next Monday after the Swansea game. And let's hope we beat them then, because if we haven't, it'll be very, very depressing. But hey, uh, let's go and cheer on the irons. Come on, you irons. If you've enjoyed this um, uh, video, then please uh, please click the thumbs up, like your button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to Hammers Chat, because it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, and a really, really good channel. So do subscribe below. Uh, also, um, do if you disagree with me, or even if you agree with me, do post a comment below. Let me know what you think. And finally, I really hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, but if you haven't, pff, that's West Ham vlogging for you. <laughs> See you next time.